Thank you for watching this Dear Systems tutorial. In this video, we'll show you how to set up a workflow automation. A workflow is a series of actions that is set to be executed when a set criteria has been met. They work in a similar way to notifications, but enable more outcomes than a simple alert action. To set up a workflow, first navigate to Settings, Automation, and then select Workflow. Here you will find a list of your current workflow setups sorted by name, entity type, and their current state. Let's imagine that within our business we have a policy that if a quote is greater than a certain amount, it will require manager approval. To create a workflow for this, select the Add New Workflow button. Here you can give your workflow a name and set its type. Note that currently there is only one type, which is Sale. Then, make the workflow active before selecting Save to start building the workflow itself. Once saved, you'll be able to select the Add Event button. This is where we'll add the first event in our workflow and the related actions that event triggers. From the dropdown, let's select Sale Quote Authorize. Now we can select our first action from the dropdown here. Let's select Confirm which is an action that notifies a select user or group of users and requires confirmation before the workflow can proceed. Before we configure the details of the action, let's first configure the specific conditions that qualifies this action by selecting Configure a Condition. Here we can select multiple parameters that need to be met, but to keep things simple, let's use our example and make the parameter related to the quote value. Select the plus symbol. Then, in parameter name, we can select the quote total from the large list of available parameters. Now we're able to select the condition, and for this scenario, we want the workflow to only trigger when the quote value is greater than or equal to $100. So we'll select the appropriate condition and include 100 in the value column. We could continue to add parameters as needed, but in this instance, we'll select OK to save our condition. You'll now see the condition logic next to the action name. Now we can set exactly how our confirm action will react. In this instance, we want to use the send to dropdown to select our sales manager's mailing list. Noting that we have both mailing lists and sales orientated contacts such as customer at our disposal. We'll be sending this via email, which can be configured by selecting the email icon. Here you'll be provided a template composing window where you can create both a subject and email body for this email. You can also use the supported placeholders dropdown to add contextual merge fields to the document as needed. Simply by selecting one of the placeholders, it will automatically be added into your email template body. Select the Add Document as Attachment option to ensure the quote is attached to this email to the managers. Once completed, you'll be able to select which template layout is used for the attachment via the Attachment dropdown. Now we can set how this action will react when no response has been received from the sales managers. We can first do this by selecting a waiting time. And if after the waiting time period we still haven't received approval or rejection from the manager, you can select how many times you wish to resend the request for confirmation. In this period, the system will send another email, and then, if you haven't received any responses yet, you can redirect the request to another recipient via email, which we can do by adding another recipient to the No Response Received dropdown. When it's received by the recipient, we can simply leave this as Undo. In the next field, click the Add Action button and choose the Authorize Order option. Here we're going to set up a condition so that the order is automatically authorized if the quote value is under $100. Alter the authorize order condition as needed and save. Now let's configure the event for when the sales approval has been received from the sales managers. Click on the add action and select authorize order. Configure the condition again to match our greater than or equal to 100 initial condition. Now we can make some logic so that as soon as the sales order is authorized, we can have the invoice produced and notify the customer. To do this, let's add another event for the sales order authorization. With this action sequence, we're simply going to use what we've learned previously to add an action to create and authorize the sale invoice for any of these sales when the order has been authorized. Once this is done, we can add a new event to notify the customer. 
create a new event for the sale invoice authorize, and here we can add a notify action. Notify works in the same way as confirm, but does not require any confirmation from the recipient. Choose the customer from the recipient list and create your email template as before. Now, while we're here in the sale invoice authorize event, let's use the additional action type of wait payment to create an action to handle payment reminders to our customer. Add the action to the same event and select a wait period that best matches your payment terms. In this instance, I'll choose 14 days waiting time and a single retry condition. But of course, this will vary depending on your business practice. Let's also use the payment logic here to notify our accounts team when a part payment of at least 50% has been applied to the invoice. Otherwise, we'll set the notification to be sent to the customer with a templated email reminding them of our payment terms. Now, I'm going to create a new event to contact my warehouse team when full payment has been received so they can prepare shipment of the order. Add a new event for the sale payment receive condition, and then use what we've learned regarding notify actions to issue an email to our warehouse team. Now, to finalize this example, we want to set two final events for the workflow. One to notify our customer once the sale has been marked as shipped, and another email sometime after shipment to thank the customer for their purchase and request any feedback on the product. To do this, let's first add a ship authorize event, and add an action to email the customer with a shipping confirmation. Then, one final event for the sale fulfillment created, where we'll select the wait action. Here we'll wait a total of five days after the sale has been fulfilled before we email the customer. In this instance, we're not going to set a retry attempt number as we don't want to bother our customer. Now we're able to set the sub action. Here, Rather than setting a condition, we can ensure that this always fires by selecting always from the dropdown. Then, select notify customer and create the email template as normal. Once the email has been composed, we can set the final condition here to stop waiting. You would use keep waiting here if you had multiple sub actions in the waiting action. As you can see from just this simple linear example, workflows can provide a large amount of custom automation that can be adjusted to meet your business process. Now, let's take a quick look at the workflow in action. I'm going to create a quote for a customer that is greater than $100 to ensure confirmation is requested from the sales managers. Once this quote is authorized, and as you can see, it's awaiting approval, we can navigate to the logs and attributes to see what has occurred in the workflow log. As you can see, the confirm email notification event has fired, and the email has been sent to the sales managers as designed. Now, if we didn't receive a confirmation after some time, we would also see the workflow log report our redirect of the confirmation email. In this instance, let's proceed as if the managers have now approved the quote they were emailed. When I refresh this page, you'll notice that the quote has been authorized as well as the sales order and sale invoice. With the workflow log reporting on each of these events as conducted. From here, I can add a payment to the invoice, which we know will trigger an email notification event to our warehouse team to fulfill the order since payment has been made. Refreshing the log once more, we can see that that has now occurred. Finally, let's complete the fulfillment of the sale to see the workflow acknowledge the shipment has been authorized and issue an email notification to our customer informing them of such. As we can see, the workflow log has reported the email to the customer confirming their order has been shipped. 
In five days time, the customer will receive one final email from our workflow automation, thanking them for their purchase and requesting any feedback. And that concludes this video on the workflow automation module.